Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bedtime Story, starring Greer Garson and Cary Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Donald Crisp. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Among the many traditions of the American stage is the amiable ability of show people to laugh at themselves. And as a result, some of our most entertaining comedies have been built around the theater. Tonight, we bring you one such comedy with two of the screen's best-loved stars, Cary Grant and Greer Garson. I have just had the pleasure of making Valley of Decision with Miss Garson at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Both of our stars, as you know, are nominees for the 1944 Academy Awards. Greer Garson for the fifth time. In addition, Miss Garson was voted America's favorite screen star in the nationwide Gallup poll, conducted for Photoplay magazine. Tonight, Greer and Carey appear in the screen hit Bedtime Story, produced by Columbia Pictures. Incidentally, the studio has just completed another hit production, Tonight and Every Night, starring a popular favorite of the Lux Radio Theater, Rita Hayward. I think you'll agree that the versatile Rita was never presented to better advantage on the screen. Now, there's a strong belief supported in our play tonight that once you're stage struck or bitten by the theater, you never lose your addiction to grease paint and footlights. Well, that could be said of other things, too. I think once people are exposed to Lux flakes, they remain loyal devotees for life. One lady tells us of using Lux to wash a piece of Chinese silk embroidery that she was about to discard as hopelessly soiled and faded. She writes, The colors came back just as lovely as they were years ago and did not run at all. Well, now, in these days when all fine fabrics are doubly precious, it's nice to know that Lux flakes are helping to preserve their color and charm. Now, here's the first act of Bedtime Story starring Greer Garson as Jane and Cary Grant as Luke. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Drake, Jane and Luke, are the first lady and gentlemen of the American theater. Every season they've given Broadway a smash hit, brilliantly written by Luke, magnificently acted by Jane. Tonight, after a solid year's run, their latest offering... Isabella the Great is closing. The curtain falls. And from the wings comes Jane to make her farewell speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. No, no, not ladies and gentlemen, but friends. What I have to say now is, well, it's not going to be easy. This was not only the last performance of Isabella, but also the last performance of Jane Drake. Yes, yes, my husband and I are retiring from the theater. Oh, I'm sorry, but that was supposed to be Mr. Drake's cue to come out here so that we could say goodbye together. But, uh, uh, uh Mr. Drake seems to have misplaced himself. So I'll have to say it for both of us. Good night, goodbye, and thank you. Eddie, where is he? Where's Luke? I don't know. Well, he certainly put me in a nice spot. Now look, Jane, I'm just a manager, not a medium. Last I saw Luke, he was at the apartment. That man can disappear quicker than a package of cigarettes. Oh, it's my own fault. I never should have let him out of my sight. Oh, good evening, Jane. Oh, come in, Dudley. Did you see me making a darn fool of myself out there? Well, the only darn fool thing you ever did was to marry Luke Drake instead of me. Ah, uh, Jane, I've been waiting for this opportunity for years. How about doing the town with me tonight, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Dudley. But we're giving a farewell party at the apartment. Why don't you join us? Oh, but that's for your theater friends. Oh, they're broad-minded. They don't mind bankers. No. No, no, I, I can't risk it. Some other time, Jane. Oh, I'm sorry, Dudley. Well, good night. Eddie, Eddie, start looking for Luke and find him. Find him. <laughs> Well, that's what I've been trying to find out all night. Jane, I simply can't understand it. Now, why this farewell to the theater? <laughs> well, Emma, 
Seven years ago, Luke and I were making an overnight jump from Duluth to Minneapolis. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh huh. <laughs> well, right then and there, we got to thinking about all the things we were missing. And we decided that before we were too old, we'd take time out to live. And then six weeks later, when we got back to New York, we bought all this furniture. You see that little cabinet over there? Yes. <laughs> We ate hamburgers for six months to pay for it, but we got it. <laughs> and we knew exactly where it was going. In fact, we bought each piece. We knew exactly where it would stand in the house. House? Uh huh. It was finished last month, right in the middle of the loveliest farm in Connecticut. Oh. Wait a minute. Has this house got a nursery? <laughs> no, Emma. No. Oh. Ah, but we have three extra bedrooms. They can all be turned into nurseries very quickly, but one at a time, of course. The idea of leaving the theater to have children. Why, I've raised four children and never missed a cue. <laughs> My dear Emma, you weren't married to Luke Drake. You wouldn't have had time to raise even an objection. <laughs> oh, no. Eight performances a week, week after week, until you're absolutely worn out. And where is Mr. Drake all this time? Well, I usually find that out the night the show closes. He's been writing another play. He comes bursting in. Sweetheart, he says the best thing I've ever done. Run down to Atlantic City and grab yourself a day's rest and read it. We start rehearsals Monday. Oh, well, I know. Oh, no, Emma. No. We're never going to look at a theater again. Well, hello. What's going on here? Luke. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, Jane. Luke, have you been in your room all this time? Yes, I'm sorry, darling. I was detained. Hi, Luke. Oh, Eddie, listen. I just called Mabel Chadwick. She's coming over here. I don't want you to haggle with her about money. <clears throat> Jane, you know Mabel Chadwick. She'd be good as Elsie, wouldn't she? Who? Elsie, Elsie. Don't you remember? I named the brunette Ruth and the blonde Elsie. Oh, yes, Well, yes. the blonde who plays opposite you is Elsie. Plays opposite me? Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you, darling. I'll be working on the new play, so get yourself a rest. You can read it while you're resting. Now, run down to Atlantic City for the weekend. We'll start rehearsals Monday. Oh, lovely. A whole weekend off. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Now, now here's the script, but be careful of it, Princess. It's the greatest thing I've ever written. And what's more, dear, it will be our first play in your own theater. My own? The Jane Drake Theater. Where did you get the money to buy a theater? Huh? Oh, I sold the farm. You sold the farm? Yes. You sold our farm? Yes, yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, don't do that. You're tearing my script. Six months of my life. And seven years of my life. You can write yourself another play and you can get yourself another star. Because I'm leaving you, Luke. Right now. Well, what did I do? What did I say? Oh, my play. Look what she did to it, my beautiful play. Here's the opening of Act Two. Oh, no. Jane couldn't have gone to Reno. This is just a bad dream. This apartment looks like a bad dream, too. What happened? Oh, she threw things at me, Eddie. She broke things. Hey, where's Elsie's second speech? I don't know. Well, find it. Yeah, it's just like a bad dream. I tell you, Eddie, something's gone out of me. I'll never set foot in the theater again. Come in. Hello, Luke. Hello, Eddie. Hiya. Hello, Mike. Come on in, Bert. Well, Luke, the set worked out fine. Yeah, and here are the sketches for Jane's gown. Oh, yeah, let me see them. Oh, Mike, what is this? I told you I wanted the stairs in the middle of the set. Well, sure, but I was oh, just... let me uh, see your sketches first. Sure. Oh, dear me, look at that. You call yourself a designer? Well, I... Well, there's too many ruffles for Jane. I said simple, simple. Uh, Luke, just to remind you, Jane is in Reno, and you're never going to set foot in the theater again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, Eddie, I can't pass this show up. It's got to be done. Now, come on, you two. Don't stand there gawking. Change the stairs, Mike. Fix the ruffles, Bert. Hurry up. Get going. Okay, Luke. I'll have it done tomorrow. Good. Eddie, she's got to play it. Don't you see what happened? I was thoughtless. She was overworked, all keyed up. She wanted a little rest. And I offered her a few days at Atlantic City. I should have given her at least a week. Hey, Eddie, get that, will you? Get yeah, that? okay. Hello? Oh, hello, Kitty. Kitty Morgan of the Globe for you. Oh, for... What does she want? What do you think? I'll tell her to... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. They print her column in Reno, don't they? If Reno's got a newspaper, they do. Well, let me have that phone. <clears throat> hello, Kitty. Yes, yes, Kitty. Well, well, naturally, I'm pretty broken up. The show? Oh, I wouldn't touch that show now or any other show. I'm through, Kitty, and... Well, I'm... Don't just know how to put it. I... Something's gone out of you. Get out of here. Don't come back until you bring me an Elsie. Okay, okay. Hello, Kitty. Well, let me put it this way. 
something has gone out of me. Something has gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Something has gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Something has gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Playwright abandoned theater. Oh, oh, Luke. Oh, darling. Hello? Hello, operator. Get me New York. Mr. Lucius Drake, quickly, please. Darling, darling. Oh, oh darling. Jamie, Jamie, darling. Oh, Luke, I'm so glad to be home. Oh, Princess, I was lost without you. Oh, darling. Oh, you had the cabinet. Mm-hmm. Oh, I darling, I cried every time I thought about breaking it. Oh, darling, let's face it. You are the most wonderful person in the world. <laughs> oh, now, Jamie. I... Taking care of all our beautiful things and giving up the theater. Why are you so selfish, darling? Oh, don't give it a thought, dear. Say, what's the matter with this drawer? Can it drawer? Uh, uh, drawer, drawer? Oh, well, it must be locked. Well, that's funny. It's never been locked before. Oh, well, you know how cabinet drawers are. Now, forget all about it. Come on, sit in my lap, huh? Luke. Have you been working on that play? Is that what's in that drawer? Oh, so, so that's what you think. All right, I'll open that drawer if I have to wreck the cabinet doing it. Where's the hammer? Oh, no, no, Luke, no. I believe you, darling. Oh, you do? Well, well, sweet, if you have the slightest suspicion. Oh, darling, I haven't. I swear it. Now, sit down. Oh, darling. <clears throat> oh, Jane. Yeah. Come in. Hi, Luke. In here, Eddie. Well, you told me to find a girl and I got it. <coughs> Eddie, the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the princess is back. Why, Jane, when did you... Oh, you're back. Yeah, huh? Find a girl for what, Eddie? Just what were you saying? Uh, yes, Eddie, a girl for what? Well, you told me... You, you told me to go out and find a nice girl and, uh, and settle down. So I did. <laughs> Come in, Bueller. Jane, meet Bueller. Oh, how do you do? Hello. Well, well. <laughs> well, Jane, who'd have dreamed that Eddie would take the big step, huh? What do you know, old sourpuss went and done it. <laughs> well, we haven't exactly done it yet. <laughs> oh, no. We haven't done it yet. Well, we've got to get together sometime. Now, how about tomorrow? Goodbye, children. Why, Luke, shame on you. I want to hear all about these lovebirds right now. Oh, you do? Mm. Sit down, Bueller. Yeah, uh, Jane, Jane, we can't stay just now. Bueller and I have to catch a show in Brooklyn. A show on Sunday? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a concert. Oh, Eddie. Uh, you going to a concert? They don't come out on a runway, you know. Uh, well, I, I guess it's Bueller's influence. Yeah, it is Bueller. She loves music. She's quite a musician. Oh, a wonderful piano. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, piano. A musician. Oh, you know, that's funny. I'd have sworn she was an actress. <laughs> <laughs> that's a laugh. What do you mean? Well, uh, <clears throat> well, I hope you enjoy the concert, Bueller. Uh, goodbye. Yeah, come on. Wait, gentlemen, look at her. Whom do you see? Uh, whom do we see? Why, why, Beulah, of course. Oh, no, no, no. Elsie. Elsie? Uh, what's she talking about, Elsie? Oh, you know, the character in your play. Oh, there. Oh, <laughs> imagine that, the play. <laughs> she still thinks Beulah's an actress. <laughs> oh, no, no, Eddie. You said she was a musician. Beulah, dear, there's plenty of time before the concert. Wouldn't you like to play something for us? Huh? Well, sit down, dear. Uh, no, 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 listen. Go on, just yeah, anything yeah. at all, Beulah. I love but the piano. The... Well, look, uh, I, I don't think oh, I'd better play. play. dear, play. Something simple. Little Shostakovich, uh, maybe? Hmm? Uh, Jane, Jane, please, please. Oh, Beulah, dear, don't be so bad. Uh, Beulah, can you, I mean, uh, would it be all right? Well, I, I'd That's play a... a girl. Go ahead, dear. Play, play. Well, okay. Oh, oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. What do no. you mean? Jane, Jane, let me explain. Shh, this listen, listen to that cadence. Isn't that thrilling? Uh, I'm really afraid I don't play very well. Oh, what are you stopping for, Beulah? Play, dear. <laughs> Jane, Jane, no, please, right, give me a chance right, to... Here's the model for the new set. Oh, get out of here, get out! Huh? The model for the new set. Beautiful, Mike. Yeah, I just got... Get to... out! Yes, get out, but don't get in my way. I'm getting out, too. Goodbye, Luke. Jane. If you want me again, my address is still the Harper Hotel in Reno. Good luck with the play. Jane. Look, listen, I couldn't help it if the same Shut day. up! Get that woman away from that piano! Hello, Harper Hotel. 
Just a moment. I'll connect you with the room clerk. Uh, pardon me. Uh, what's, uh, what's Mrs. Drake's room number, please? Your name, please. Mr. Drake. One moment, please. I'll announce you. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, miss, uh, will you call Mrs. Drake's room, please? Tell her Mr. Williams is here. Well, 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 if it isn't Dudley. Luke. Well, what brings you here? I, I I didn't know you were in Reno. Well, I didn't know you were in Reno. Well, now, see here, old man. Let's not create a scene. Why not? I enjoy a good scene. Will you be quiet? You may not have any reputation, but I have. You haven't got a chance, but Jane, can you hear that? You are worth her little finger. Yes, please, quiet. Oh, hello, Jane. Oh, good evening, Dudley. How nice of you to ask me to dinner. Jane, I'd like to talk to you. Shall we go, Dudley? Well, where else shall we go, then? <laughs> Well, the world's in a mighty fine state when a man can't talk to his own wife and a man named Dudley Williams comes courting her before she's even divorced. Quiet, quiet. What are you trying to do, Drake? I am a trying to carry on a little private conversation with my wife. Well, for heaven's sake, Jane, say something to him. Hello. Uh, Jane, now, let's go to your room. I'd rather not. Well, then take my car. It's right at the curb. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you, Dudley. Well, now, Dudley, you, you wait right here for me. Good night, Jane. I'm much obliged, old pal, old kid, old stuffed shirt. Well, when are you going to talk? <laughs> well, you know, Jane, we, uh... We've come a long way since we, thought, since we stood before that small-town preacher, haven't we? Yes, yes, and what have we got out of it? Well, I don't know. We've had seven years, the greatest, the most electrifying years of my life. Ah, oh, the word is shocking. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't remember any other years, only the ones I spent with you. Now, just keep driving, Luke, just keep driving. <laughs> Why, what are you afraid of? Luke, I want you to tell me something before we go any further. In mileage, I mean. Are you going to give up the theater? Nope. Then there's nothing more to be said. Please, take me back to the hotel. And you won't give it up either. All right, maybe you'll hook up with somebody like old stuff shirt Dudley. But just as sure as today is Wednesday... I've got you... news for you, darling. Today is Thursday, not Wednesday. Oh. Well, all right. All right, Princess. Anyway, will you do one thing for me? Will you read the new play? I've never put on anything without your advice and help. And, uh, well, here, I brought it along. Well, I... I... Can't read in the dark. I'll switch the light on for you. All right, give me the play. Oh, thank you. Hey, what's that? Oh, I don't know. Well, what's the matter with it? Well, I guess there's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> We're out of gas. Oh. That's fine. Oh, dear me. I've met characters in my time, but never any like Dudley. Can you imagine that? A man with all his money and what happens? He comes according with an empty tank. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a silly thing? I'm never out of gas. This is one time I wish you were. Uh -oh. Well, do something. We can't sit out here all night. Well, uh, <clears throat> there uh, must be an auto court nearby. Hmm? <clears throat> there must also be a gasoline station nearby. Oh, as a matter of fact, there is one. Look, right over there. Oh, yeah. So there is. <laughs> Aren't we lucky? Folks. Hello. Hello. We'd like some gas, please. Nope. Sorry. What do you mean, nope? Sorry. Can't. Why not? Rita Hayworth. Well, look, Pop, what's Rita Hayworth got to do with our buying gas? Rita Hayworth's picture thing in Reno. Some's betty about Rita Hayworth. Son of picture show. Key to gas pump and send pocket. <clears throat> You'll excuse me. What did you say? He said Rita Hayworth's picture thing in Reno. Some's betty about Rita Hayworth. Son of picture show. Key to gas pump and some pocket. Shall we go round again? No, it's like the first time. <clears throat> well, now, it's just perfect. Did he have to take the key with him? He don't trust me. Like a cabin? He got some nice cabin. Oh, no thanks, no thanks. We'll wait for your son here. Son spends the night in Reno sometimes. Won't be back till morning, maybe. Oh, is that a definite, maybe? Maybe. Uh, sure you don't want a cabin? Well, uh... All right, all right. We'll take two cabins. Sorry, lady, only got one. Then I'll take it alone. Yes, ma'am, this way. Oh, Jane. Good night, Luke. Now, Jane, uh, I'm going to be cold out here. How can I keep warm? Talk to Pop. He'll tell you about Rita Hayworth. Good night, Luke. Janie. Princess, open the door, please. Well? Hello. Hello. Uh, Jane, did you... Uh, <clears throat> did you read the play? Yes. Yes, I did. Well, all right. Say it, Princess. There's something you don't like. Yes, Luke, there is. I, uh, 
I don't like your quibbling about the custody of the child, because after all... Oh, I'm glad you said that. That's one scene that doesn't please me either. But go ahead, Princess, go ahead. Luke, I think it's the greatest play you've ever written. You mean that? Yes, and I think the part of Ruth is the greatest feminine role I ever read. Well, then, well... I hope you get a fine actress to play it. Our stars will be back with Act Two of Bedtime Story in a moment. Now, Sally, what have you behind your back? That's for you to find out, Mr. Kennedy. Which hand will you take? Well, I'll take that one, the left. Okay, here. Well, that's nothing but a rubber band. Let's see if it's any good. Whoop! it broke. That's because it's lost its elasticity. Now, that's what happens to stockings, too, when they lose their elasticity. You stretch them by bending your knee and they pop a run. I see what you mean, Sally. It's important to save the elasticity of your stockings. Yes. Now see what I have in my right hand. Another rubber band? Mm-hmm, but this one's good. Let me see if I can stretch and, and stretch it. And even a little more. Hmm, it doesn't break. It still has elasticity. Like stockings that have been washed regularly in Lux. Gentle Lux flakes save elasticity. So stockings give under strain and don't pop into run so often. That's right. Strain tests prove it. A famous laboratory stretched stockings over and over again, as you do when you wear them. The ones that had been washed with a strong soap or rubbed with a cake of soap soon lost their elasticity. Just like that old rubber band. They broke into runs quickly. But the stockings that had been washed with gentle Lux flakes kept their elasticity and lasted twice as long. That's just like getting an extra pair every time you buy a pair. Yes, Sally, Lux cuts down runs... And cuts down stocking bills, too. And remember, always dry rayons at least 24 hours. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of Bedtime Story, starring Cary Grant as Luke and Greer Garson as Jane. After a sleepless night in the back seat of the automobile, Luke is bleary-eyed and rumpled. At the wheel of the car, ready to leave the auto court, he glances appealingly at Jane, who is gazing very interestedly at the scenery, and the attendant waits so patiently for his money. I said, my son put in ten gallons. That'll be four dollars and forty cents with the single cabin. Uh, uh, what? I said four forty. Oh, well, I haven't any money. Well, we have no money. Well, my wife will pay you. Oh, honestly, Luke, you are the most helpless creature. Oh, you're so right, Princess. Helpless. I'm sorry, I haven't any cash. Here's my credit card. I'll make out a receipt. My darling wife, I owe you my life. And four dollars and forty cents. And I expect to collect it, see? Then you figure to pay it back. Now, stop hounding me. In the meantime, have old 6% Dudley figure up the interest. Over a period of 20 years, you know, it'll double itself. Here you are, lady, your receipt. Oh, thank you. Back again sometime. Oh, if I ever get back to Nevada, I'll look you up the very first thing. Nevada? You ain't in Nevada. This is California. Huh. Don't even know what state they're in. <laughs> Jane Drake granted divorce. Famous actress gives up career. Oh, she can't do this. She can't. Luke Drake casts new play. Virginia... Virginia Cole gets lead dramatic part. Virginia Cole is comedian. Oh, he can't do that. He can't. Listen, Luke, I can't play a part intended for Jane Drake. Don't be silly, Virginia. Tell her, Luke. Look, what is all this? Virgie, the part in that play is still intended for Jane Drake. Oh, a dual role. I play it, but I don't play it. That's right. Well, so long, Luke. No, no, no. no. Wait a minute, Virgie. Please. I want you to pretend you're going to play it. Now, if there's one thing Jane can't stand, it's to see a good part, a part meant for her, murdered by miscasting. Oh, yeah. Now, look. I'm a funny woman, but I have my feelings. Oh, Mr. Drake, Mrs. Drake is here. What, the princess? She's here? Send her in. Yes, sir. Well, lady, what do you think of the general now? Okay, general, you win. Virgie, 
What do you say? Will you say you're paying it? Well, at least it's different being fired before you're hired. For you, I'll do it. Oh, Virgie, you're a sweetheart. Watch it. Morning, Luke. Oh, hello, Jane. <clears throat> now, look, Virginia, on the second act curtain, Ruth slaps her face. See? A backhand blow. Get it? Sure, sure, I see. Good girl. Oh, uh, uh, Jane, this is uh, Virginia Cole. And uh, this is my, uh, <clears throat> no, this is Jane Drake. How do you do? Well, how do you do? And congratulations, Miss Cole. It's a wonderful part. Oh, I'm dying to play it. And Luke's so confident. Well, he should be. You're very talented. Oh, thank you. So are you. Many's the time I've cried at your performances. Well, I've laughed a lot at you, so that makes it easy. <laughs> well, I'll be running. Goodbye, Luke. Goodbye. So long, Eddie. Yeah. I uh, got the makings of a great actress, that Virgie. Luke, I... <laughs> now, Eddie, for the part of the editor, I want Whitbeck. Luke. Uh, just a second, Jane. The best people for every part, no matter how small, Eddie. Luke, I just dropped here, in here to tell you that I'm selling the furniture. Okay, okay. And another thing, Eddie, if... What? Well, I thought you'd like to know. I'm selling the furniture. What? You, you mean... You mean our things? Yes. Oh, listen, you can't do that. I've worked hard to buy that furniture. Many's the time I've given up a meal and just ate hamburgers. And what do I get? Nothing. You're lucky. I get indigestion. <laughs> now, under the circumstances, don't you think we ought to get rid of the furniture? Well, yes, I guess so. And the quickest way is an auction. Any objection? No. No, of course not. Very well. I'll attend to it. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eddie. Bye. Uh, where are you going? I'll to get a hamburger. An auction. Well, General, how are things in general? Shut up. Sold. Sold. Everything I had in the world. Sold. Oh, but Jane, dear, that's what an auction's for. Look at this table. Sold to Mr. Dinglehoff. My beautiful vase. Sold to Mr. Dinglehoff. Oh, Dudley... I wouldn't mind so much if it hadn't been a man named Dinglehoff. Oh, but dear Mr. Dinglehoff offered a profit, a very comfortable profit. Well, now, let's see, where are you going to live? Oh, I'm taking an apartment upstairs. Dinglehoff. A man buys all the things we walked our feet off to find, and where is Luke all this time? He doesn't even care enough to show up to buy his own desk. The one I gave him when we were first married. His feet look so distinguished on it. Now, 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 now Jane, why get upset? Upset? Over him? Why, there isn't a drop of real feeling left in him. For that precious play of his, he'd, he'd steal the blankets off a shivering orphan. Oh, Jane, dear, I, I, I wish I could help you. Oh, you do, Dudley. You do help. You know something, Dudley? I'm beginning to appreciate you. Your, your dignity and your dependability. Dudley, I want to see a lot of you. An awful lot. <laughs> Emma, put some life in the pot. Try that line again. Ruth, you've been out over an hour. Where were you? You'd really like to know. Where were you? Oh, no, no, no. You're not asleep, Emma. Are you? Perhaps my play is boring you. Oh, Luke. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I raise my voice above a whisper and she blubbers like a schoolgirl. That's not what I'm blubbering about. How can you expect us to rehearse? How can you do it when... When? When what? Everybody seems to know about it, but you, you silly playwright. The papers are full of it. But you're so busy yelling your fool head off. And where's the paper, Eddie? Get me the paper. <laughs> there it is, Luke. Picture on page six. Jane Drake to wed socialite banker. <laughs> Divorced actress announces engagement to Dudley Williams, Jr. Well, rehearsal at eight tonight. Back at eight, everyone. Well, she served notice on you, pal. Yep. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Mac. Has my car sneaked up on that fire hydrant again? <laughs> no, no ticket this time. Hiya, Mr. Drake. Hello, Mac. Say, Eddie, what I dropped in for, you better stay away from Billy's place tonight on account of we're going to raid it. Billy's? What's that got to do with me? Well, that wouldn't be your grandfather. They'd pour out of there every other morning, would it? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where is this Billy's place, Eddie? How should I know? Now, stop stalling. What kind of a joint is it? Liquor without a license and a nice friendly tap game on the side. Yes, where is it? Don't look at me. I don't know what he's talking where about. Where is it? Third door down the street, 841. Well, come on. I've got to get to a phone. Hello, Jane. This is Luke. I just read the news. Congratulations. 
Listen, dear, I'd, uh, I'd like you and Dudley to have dinner with me this evening. Oh, now, please. I'll, I'll ask Dudley. Really? Yes, I'll tell him to meet us here at the theater. And the minute you both get here, we'll go. Oh, that's fine, Jane. Thanks. Okay, I'll call Dudley right now. Goodbye. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? What's that Billy's address again? 841. Hey, what are you doing? I am calling Mr. Dudley Williams. I'm inviting him to dinner at Billy's place. But, Luke, there are other places besides Billy's place. This one will do in a pinch. <clears throat> Take the scene once more from Virgie's entrance. Places, please. Hey, Luke, Jane's here. Where? Sitting in the last row. Watch me. Eddie, I'll have her up on that stage in five minutes. Just watch me. Well, go on, Virgie, go on. I didn't get a cue. Well, take it from it doesn't matter what I want. And get a little feeling into it. Now, please, go on. It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me. Oh, what's hold it, hold it. That's horrible. I want you to bite and scratch and snarl. But like a lady. Now, try it again without the yodel. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me. What's proper and what isn't proper. <laughs> well, you swear you scolded me long enough. Now I'll tell you something. No, 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 no. Eddie, what have I done to deserve this? I give my whole life to the theater and what do I get? A home caller. Oh, stop it, stop it. Oh, you aren't crying. You couldn't cry. You haven't got an emotion in your whole body. Oh, Luke, cut it out. You want to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, hello, Jane. I, I didn't know you were here. Well, it's obvious she doesn't know what you want. Why don't you go up there and show her yourself? Well, what do I look like, a guinea pig? Ah, oh, don't be so self-conscious, dear. I don't know what he wants, Miss Drake. Won't you show me? Not even Jane Drake could show you. Ellen Terry couldn't. Sarah Bernhardt couldn't. Why don't you crawl back under your rock? As I was saying before, I was interrupted by this, uh, this... Uh, snake, maybe? Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try and show you, Miss Cole. Has anyone got a script? Here, take mine. Thank you. Now, if you'll just give me a minute to look this over. Okay, Jane. Hey, hey, listen, Luke. The patrol wagon. <laughs> Well, don't look now, Eddie, but I think that's Dudley going bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, Jane? Ready? I think a crack at it. Oh, darn that racket. Well, just talk about it, Jane. All right. All right, let's start here. Hmm? It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me, what's proper and isn't proper. You bullied and scolded me long enough, and now I'll tell you something that you'll never forget. It's a free country, and what I choose to do is none of the town's business. No. And another thing. That gardener's going to stay just as long as I want him to. And that's forever, because I love him. You love him? Yes, I love him, and I'm going to marry him. Curtain! Very nice, Jane. Oh, thank you, Emily. Well, there you are, Virgie, you see? Yeah, I see. I could never play that scene for you, Luke, but watch me play this one. Go ahead, Virgie, give. I can't do it like that. What's more, I won't even try. That's the girl. Now, listen, you signed a contract, Miss Cole. I didn't sign a contract to make a sucker out of myself. You can't run out on me. I'll see that you never get another part on Broadway. All right, then. I'll go back into burlesque. I won't have to act there. I won't have to say a word. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, Jane, no. Let her go. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Luke. I, I thought it would help her. Maybe. Oh, maybe she's right, Jane. She could never have played the part in... Well, I... Well, thanks oh, just the same, Jane. Yeah. Well, my friends, I... <clears throat> I hate to tell you this, but there's not a chance for us opening now. You've been very kind and patient with me, and I hope you'll all get better parts and better plays. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Well, come on, Jane. Dudley ought to be along any minute. We'll wait out in the lobby. Yes, yes. Good night, Look, there must be somebody who could play that part. You can't just give up. Well, what if I did find her? It would take work and time. I can't postpone indefinitely. Well, uh... No, I'm going to forget all about it. It's tough on the troop, though. <laughs> they need the job. Yes, yes, I know. Where in the world is Dudley? Yes, that's right. Where is Dudley, Eddie? Oh, he'll probably be along pretty soon. I don't understand this at all. It isn't like him. No, this isn't like Dudley Williams. Junior. You said it. <clears throat> no, he, uh... Probably got held up somewhere. Well, no. now, uh, now look. Why don't we go over to Tony's, huh? Wait a minute. What about Dudley? Oh, the stage door man will tell him. It'll be all right. Well, ah, uh, look at that sign, the Jane Drake Theater. <laughs> well, Eddie, 
I guess you can hold the sign away with the scenery. Oh, it's an awfully nice sign. Yes, it's nice, big letters, too. Yes. Luke. Mm-hmm? Luke, suppose you had someone to play that part just temporarily, I mean, so that you could keep the troop together and open as you planned. Mm, suppose, suppose. Well, you'd have time to find somebody and work with her until she could take my place. Your place? Well, I... I... Princess. Would you do that for me? Now, don't misunderstand me, Luke. I haven't changed my mind about the theater, but temporarily to help out the company... Gosh, Jane, that'd I... be wonderful. Hi, Eddie. Oh, hiya, Max. Well, Eddie, we raided Billy's place, just like I told you. Well, I'll see you again sometime. Hey, Max. So long, Max. <laughs> Boy, when you tap one of them places, you should see what comes rolling out. Yeah, 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 yeah. See you around, Max. Goodbye, Max. <laughs> Everything from a boot flag to a blue blood. This time we nabbed a Park Avenue banker. Mm. What? Yeah, did he try to pull a new one? <laughs> he said he thought the place yes, was... Well, come on, Jane, let's go. Yeah, let's, yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. Just a minute, just a minute. Max, this Park Avenue banker thought the place was what? He said he thought it was a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? Very funny. <laughs> Luke, uh, Luke, dear, yeah? you know that scene in the play where the girl delivers the backhand slap? Well, sure. What about it? Well, you know, I think it ought to be done like this. Oh! Well, let's see. Apartment 1004. Hmm. Right over our old place. Luke, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with Jane just by bringing her a potted plant. I think you oh, ought to... Oh, stop worrying, Eddie. Now, she promised to do the part, didn't she? Yeah, but that was before she had to get Dudley out of jail last uh, don't night. Don't you worry, Eddie. You just leave it to King Lucius the First, Lucius the Conqueror. <clears throat> now, here we are, Prime Minister. Ring the bell. Eddie, the play and the drake shall go on for seven more years, for seven times seven more years. Oh, Mr. Drake. Ah, good day, good day. Betsy, my girl, inform your mistress that His Majesty and the Prime Minister have come to chew the fat. Oh, Mr. Drake. What's the matter? What is it? Anything happened to Mrs. Drake? Yes, she's Mrs. Williams. She, she's what? She just phoned from Greenwich. She and Mr. Williams were married there ten minutes ago. Married? Well, Luke, the king is dead. Yeah. Long live the princess. Our stars will be back with Act Three of Bedtime Story in a moment. Now, here's a lady who solved a problem. The problem of keeping the house down to 65 degrees to save fuel and still keeping her family warm. We do it with sweaters. We all wear them indoors as well as out this year. Of course, it does mean extra washing, but I don't mind. And I suspect there's a box of Lux Flakes in your kitchen. That's right. I started using Lux for the children's woolies when they were small. And, well, I just kept right on. I always do woolens before they're really dirty. That way, there's no rubbing and they stay soft and fluffy. Did you know that rubbing actually makes a sweater less warm? Why, no. How's that? Wool fibers contain tiny air pockets that act as insulators, keep cold out and heat in. But if you rub the wool, the fibers flatten and the air pockets disappear. Of course, with Lux, you don't need to rub. I just squeeze the suds through the sweaters ever so gently and use almost cool water. Any other special hints? Well, yes. I make a master pattern for all of our sweaters. One pattern for everybody? I don't see. Well, I drew Dad's first. That's the biggest. On a big piece of brown paper. Just an outline around the sweater. Then inside this outline, I drew mine and sister's and then Tommy's. Whenever I lux a sweater, I pin it to the proper outline and let it dry flat. Of course, I only dry one sweater at a time. This simple plan keeps sweaters fitting perfectly. They look like new all over again. Yes, gentle Lux Care keeps all washable woolens fluffy and new looking longer. Now, Donald Crisp returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll call our stars to the footlights for a brief chat. Now, here's Act Three of Bedtime Story, starring Greer Garson as Jane and Cary Grant as Luke. <laughs> Mrs. Dudley Williams, a bride of ten minutes, is on her way back to town. Ah, but King Lucius refuses to acknowledge defeat. Somewhere in his fertile brain is a plan 
It is evolving. Eddie, I've got it. Get me two character actors who've never played in New York. What? Two character actors. Now, get them. One hour later, just 30 seconds after the bride and groom reach their hotel suite, there's a knock on the door. Well? Is Mrs. Drake here? No, if you mean Mrs. Williams, yes. Aha, uh -huh, that's exactly what we've come about. Whether she is Mrs. Williams or still Mrs. Drake. What? Oh, come in, please. Just a minute, who are you? Collins and Pierce, legal representatives of the Colony Insurance Company. We hold a trust fund in the names of Mr. and Mrs. Drake jointly. Well, what about it? Well, if either party remarries, the fund is to be divided. Well, I've remarried. Divided. Oh. Ah. Oh, what? That's the question. Is the marriage valid? Is it valid? Why, of course it's... Well, I'm Mr. Williams. Oh. Ah. Where were you married? Well, in Greenwich. Oh. Did you check to see if a Reno divorce was acceptable in Connecticut? Well, naturally, we had the bank lawyer's advice. Oh, bank lawyer. Harvard Ben. Ah. Now, look, Mr. R., I'm sure everything was in order. I wouldn't have been married if I hadn't been properly divorced. Would I? Well, naturally, there's Nevada and there's New York. I just told you we were married in Connecticut. Then there's Nevada and Connecticut. Now, if we find anything wrong with your divorce, naturally, you will have committed uh, bigamy. Uh, embarrassing, isn't it? Bigamy? Well, oh, just a moment. Haven't I, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Well, I, 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 I doubt it very much, madam. A doctor. Haven't you a brother who's a doctor? Oh, well, I haven't even got a brother. I don't know anyone who looks like me. That I can believe. Uh, Jane, uh, look. Oh, Dudley, the whole thing's ridiculous. Yes, I, but, 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 Jane, if, if there is a risk of bigamy... Dudley, you too. Now, 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 be reasonable, Jane. Look, I'll call Eccles, the best divorce lawyer in town. Well, I don't know a word of law, but I can smell something fishy about this on my law. Uh, madam, there is no place in law for a woman's nostrils. <laughs> Oh, where is Eccles? We've been waiting an hour. Why doesn't he come? Oh! Oh, will you please stop saying that? There he is, Dudley. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, you. Evening, Dudley. <clears throat> Congratulations, Jane. Hmm. I sort of expected you. I dropped my mirror this morning. Well, well, quite a crowd. Well, I must say you've got a nerve to show your face around here after making me spend a night in jail. Uh, don't knock it. Rooms are hard to get. <clears throat> And I'm not the kind that holds a grudge, Dudley. No, no. Grieving playwright comes to congratulate ex-happy actress. You wouldn't happen to know these two, uh, I use the word loosely, gentlemen? No, no, I don't think I've had the pleasure. And you wouldn't know anything about questioning my divorce either, would you? <laughs> oh, now, don't tell me that's what they're doing. Yes. Why, what for? Oh, just for the fun of it. These boys like to play Halloween all the year round. In fact, they're, uh, they're still wearing their masks, I think. Oh, boys, you ought to be ashamed. Look, I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, Jane. Eccles. It's Eccles. Oh, come in, come in, quick. Evening, Dudley. Oh, thank heaven you are here. Oh, darling, this is Mr. Eccles. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Dudley, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard of. I'm sure it won't take a minute. Ah, there. There, there, you see. Oh, Dudley, stop. You're acting like a frightened old maid. Well, I, I won't leave this room with our status up in the air. Now, Jane, Dudley knows best. He wants to iron out your status. Lucius Drake, author, man of imagination, cooks up a brand new plan to get his play on at any cost. Never mind anyone's happiness, just get the play done. Is that what you really think? Yes, it is. Please, please, just what is the point in question? It is our contention that while Mrs. Drake was in Reno, she left to join Mr. Drake in New York. Yes, yes, I did. Ah. And therefore broke her required stay in Nevada. But I went back. I started all over again. I stayed the full six weeks. Jane, can you prove that? Yes, yes, I can. I have my Reno hotel receipt. I can account for every day. Excellent. Now, wait a minute, yes. Yes, here they are. Here, you look at them. Yes. Look, Harper Hotel, two weeks. Harper Hotel, two weeks, and so on. Elite order court, ten gallons of gas, and lodging, four dollars, and... Oh. Well, what's that one, Jane? Oh, it's nothing. No, that doesn't belong with these others. Uh, will you step over here, gentlemen, and examine them? Please? Certainly. Yes, indeed, it. Well, come on, Princess. Think fast. You know, you married Deadly Dudley out of pure spite. Now, the answer's in your hands, Jane. Yes. Yes, it is, isn't it? Elite Auto Court, Glenville. Well, what's that got to do with it? You owe me $4.40, Luke. Jane, be serious. Oh, do you know, Luke, I had a dream last night. I dreamed I picked up a knife and stabbed you. 
And when you started to bleed, it wasn't blood at all. What came pouring out of you was manuscripts and scenery and footlights. Right now, it isn't me you're thinking of, nor my marriage to Dudley. That precious play of yours. You'd see me burned to the stake for it. There isn't anything you could say now that I believe. No, no, I guess there's nothing you'd believe. Well, all right, Hank, all right, Billy. Drop the curtain, the show's over. Oh, actors. Characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember Billy Pierce? He played the doctor in the Rogue Company of Tornado. Hello, Jane. Oh, a doctor. Of course. I should have guessed it by the way he kept saying, ah. Oh. Well, there must be something in the criminal code covering this. Isn't there, Eccles? Mm, I'm a divorce lawyer. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Drake, for the entertainment. Actor. Well, thanks a lot, boys. Look up Eddie tomorrow and he'll pay you. It isn't very often you get your teeth into a good part. Good show, but a short run. Oh, now get out of here. Yes, great place, the theater. We can play it being anything. Doctors, lawyers, anything we like. <laughs> it's just a great big make-believe world. I... Well, I guess I'd better get going. Good luck, Princess. Elite Porter Court, Denver, California. <laughs> Jane, I've got to talk oh, to you. Oh, Emma, this is my wedding day. Dudley will be back in a moment. Dudley, and... you left the swellest guy in the world and went out and picked that dope. Oh, the swellest guy in the world is married to his play. What play? He called it off. He... He called it off? When? This afternoon. Everybody in the cast was paid off with a bonus. He called it off? Yes, because he loves you. Oh, Emma... Oh, Emma, he just left here. Do you think you could find him? Anybody'd know where to find him tonight. He's in some bar. Emma, look, get to him and get to him quickly and give him this, this receipt. Uh, he owes me $4.40 and I want it, see? Now tell him to look at it and to study it carefully. He's got to do it now, tonight. Do you understand? A measly $4 at a time like this. What's got in here? Oh, Emma, just do it. Do exactly what I told you. Please, darling, put this bill right under his nose. <laughs> And she said she wanted her $4.40, Luke. Now. Oh, sure, sure. Anything for the princess. Eddie, what do I want? A drink. No. I want my wife. I want her more than all the plays in the world. Lucius, you'd better write a check before you forget it. Sure, sure, Emma. Give me the thing. Here. <laughs> Four dollars and forty cents. <laughs> Penalty. Sure. Well, let's see. Elite Auto Court, Glenville, California. Elite Auto Court. California? California. Ca California? Don't do that. Eddie, quick. A cab. Get me a cab. What's the matter? Well, I've got to get to the hotel. On the technicality, she's still my wife. Who is? My wife is! <laughs> Hello. H hello, desk. Now, listen, this is Mr. Dudley Williams in 725. A Mr. Lucius Drake may try to see Mrs. Williams or me this evening. And no matter what he says, don't let him up. A and by the way, I, I shouldn't wonder if he's a little dangerous. You'd better keep a sharp eye on him. Thank you. Dudley? Dudley, who was it? Was it for me? Oh, no, 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 dear. Uh, just the desk clerk, dear. Oh. Oh, uh, by the way, I've, uh... I've ordered some champagne. Oh, oh well, well, that's fine. You know, darling, I, uh, I haven't kissed you since the ceremony this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, let, let's wait for the champagne, darling. <laughs> what do you mean I can't go upstairs? I'm sorry, sir, I have orders. I tell you, I have to see Mrs. Williams. If you go near that elevator, sir, you'll be arrested. I warn you. Oh, all right. Where are the telephones? Right over there, sir. Hello. Hello? Get me the housekeeper. Hello? Housekeeper? This is room 725. What kind of a hotel is this? The sheets haven't been changed. There aren't any towels and the tub is dirty. Thank you. Please come right up here. Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Get me room service, please. Yes. Hello, room service? This is Mr. Williams in 725. Would you send up six chicken dinners right away? Good. 
Hello, operator. Uh, give me the plumber. The plumber. Hello, plumber. Say, this is 725. The pipe's up here making a racket to wake the dead. Please come right up here. Hello? Hello? Get me the electrician. Uh, Jane, dear. Come here. Uh, Dudley. Uh, Dudley, listen. Oh, Jane. Jane, what is it? Uh, you're, you're acting so strangely. Dudley, about, about the technicality. Were you and Mr. Eccles certain? Oh, who cares about a little technicality? Oh, Jane, darling. Uh, uh, Dudley. Dudley, there's another technicality. Oh, oh, you poor baby. You're upset. No, Dudley. You, oh, oh, wait a minute. You've got to listen to me. You've got to. Uh, oh. Oh, who can that be? Well, what's the matter with the bed? Who are you? I'm the chambermaid. That's who I am. Well, now, listen, you. I'll are... have those pipes fixed in a minute, sir. What pipes? The bathtub pipes. Now, wait a minute. You want six more towels in here? No. Well, I put in six this morning. No, no. no this... Let's take it up here. No fire is here. You get out of here. The beds are fine. Don't worry, Mr. Williams. Six chickens in there. What sort of a hotel is this? Are you Mr. Williams? Yes, I'm Mr. Williams. Well, where are the bugs? What bugs? You said the joint was swarming with bugs. Oh, I did not. Turn off that vacuum cleaner. You want the rug clean, don't you? Hey, this room sounds funny, Frank. Yes, but it's good. Come on in, guys. No. Here's where the clap game is. Oh. Oh. Stop. Stop. Get out of here. Do you hear me? Get out of here. Fire, princess. Noisy place. Oh, what you do? <laughs> Make a great second act curtain. Come on, come on. We're leaving. Well, what for? I'm enjoying it. Oh, you won't in a minute. I've got the riot squad coming. <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm. What do you think how we've been for years? Never a ripple. Happy as life. I just keep asking myself, how do we get into a spot like this? Princess, we're both wrong. Oh, I knew I'd be wrong. Sure. <laughs> well, we both want things, don't we? So what do two intelligent people do in a situation like this? They decide to give and take. Oh, look, look. We're on the wrong floor. I've moved upstairs, you dumb. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> Habit. Our old apartment. Look, what you're doing, are you crazy? No, go on in. No, we can't go in. Look. Look. Our old furniture. Why, it's every single piece. Oh, look. Um, just, uh, just call me Dinglehoff. Dinglehoff? You? Oh, darling. Oh, darling, Mr. Dinglehoff. Oh, I love that name. I could get the farm back, too. Oh, you could, could you? Suppose it isn't for sale. Oh, why wouldn't it be? Because I won't sell it. Uh, you? You? <laughs> oh, Jamie. That's right. Well, darling, have you got a copy of the play? Uh, the play? Well, we have to compromise, don't we? Come on, let's go to work. Oh, no. No, there won't be any play. I haven't even got a copy of it. I I destroyed every one. Oh. Well, I hear one, dear. Right in the cabinet drawer. <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Listen to that hand, Luke. That ten curtain call. It's a smash hit, Eddie. We'll run five years. Hey, Jane's going to make a curtain speech. Ladies and gentlemen, my husband, Mr. Drake, is in the wings. And he'll be out here in just a moment. But first, I'd like to tell you that this will have to be the shortest run of any of Mr. Drake's plays. No, 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 no. Five years, Janie. Five years. It will be closed in the early spring. And I'm sure that my husband hopes it will be a boy. No, no, five years. What? <laughs> Go on out, Luke. Luke. Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Drake just fainted. Good night. <laughs> In just a moment, our stars will return for their curtain call. Meanwhile, let's take a look in Betsy Brown's kitchen. Betsy is washing up the lunch dishes. Now, who can that be? All right, wait a minute till I dry my hands, can't you? Oh, hello, Nancy. My, don't you look nice. 
What's up? I just thought maybe you'd like some bricks this afternoon. How about it? Oh, goodness, I'm too busy. Besides, I look like last year's dish rags. Did you ever see a worse case of dishpan hands? Never. What are you using, that strong soap on the windowsill? Uh-huh. Well, maybe that's what's giving you dishpan hands. Why don't you change to Lux Flakes? Because I stay up nights watching pennies, darling. I bet you don't know how thrifty Lux is. Look, I'm so sure Lux goes further. Let's make a bet. You keep track of how long your soap lasts. I'll keep track of my Lux. And what do you suppose happened? Yes, Nancy was right. Lux won hands down. Ounce for ounce, Lux does up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps tested. A little Lux goes further than these other soaps. And best of all, my hands are soft and smooth again now that I've changed from strong soap to Lux. My, I'm glad Lux is so thrifty. Now, back to Donald Crisp and our stars. And now our first lady and gentlemen of the theater, Jane and Luke, become in real life Priya Garson and Cary Grant, who come forward for their curtain calls. Well, Donald, I think that the, uh, the First Lady title is especially appropriate for Greer. You know, there's another poll that she's just won. What's that, Carrie? Well, that's the appeal she made on the screen for money to fight infantile paralysis. It drew the biggest response they've ever had. Well, that's splendid, Greer. And the uh, Office of War Information asks us to remind our listeners of another vitally important thing, that we've got a long, hard war ahead of us. None of those men fighting the Japs at Iwo Jima or anywhere else think that when Germany is licked, it can just begin to take it easy. Yes, that's what I hear from my husband from the South Pacific. In other words, this is no time to let up on bond purchases or start relaxing on the job. That's right, Don. And when you're writing to a man in the service, let him know you realize that the job ahead is tough and that you're doing all you can to share the burden. I think that's a mighty important reminder. And now, in a different note, I'd like to remind you about our show for next week. Uh, what are you going to bring us next week, Donald? One of Lloyd Douglas's great novels, screened by Paramount and called Disputed Passage. It's the tense and thrilling story of a man's soul and a man's love pitted against the harsh demands of science. A struggle that reaches its supreme test in the crucible of war. And our stars are Alan Ladd, Akin Timorov, and Anne Richards. It should make a great play, Donald. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good luck to both of you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Alan Ladd, Akin Timerov, and Anne Richards in Disputed Passage. Donald Crisp can currently be seen in Metro Golden Mayor Technicolor picture, National Velvet. Bedtime Story, based on the story by Horace Jackson and Grant Garrett, was presented through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, producers of the new Technicolor musical, Tonight and Every Night. Cary Grant can currently be seen in the RKO production, None But the Lonely Heart. Heard in tonight's play were Carlton Cadell, Arthur Q. Bryan, Verna Felton, Eddie Marr, Ed Emerson, Linda King, Norman Field, Leo Cleary, Dorothy Scott, Jay Novello, Boyd Davis, Charles Seal, Dora Singleton, and Colleen Collins. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Bedtime Story, starring Greer Garson and Cary Grant, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the tissue-thin soap used by smart housewives everywhere. Be part of the coast-to-coast -coast audience that gathers each week to enjoy this hour of dramatic entertainment with the finest artists of Broadway and Hollywood in plays that you yourselves have told us you'd like to hear. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Disputed Passage with Alan Ladd, Akeem Tamirov, and Ann Richards. Send now for Spry's sensational Flower Garden Offer. The makers of Spry Shortening will send you eight packets of California-grown seeds for thousands of brilliant, glorious flowers to bloom all summer. Just send your name and address and 15 cents to Aunt Jenny, Box 1200, Chicago, Illinois. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Disputed Passage with Alan Ladd, Akeem Tamirov, and Ann Richards. This is CBS.